Hey team, I'm editing Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And uh, today we're talking about saturation and some of the sort of like intuitive differences between relative humidity and uh, specific humidity. Yeah, this is uh, part two of the video that I decided to split into two pieces in post. So uh, that's why the intro is all weird and I, I hope you guys like it and I'm, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for bearing with me. The main thing we're trying to understand here is sort of what's the difference between relative humidity and absolute measures of moisture like specific humidity and mixing ratio. Words are hard. And the, the difference there is that the warmer air is, the more water vapor it's able to hold. So let me sketch you a quick graph. My y-axis here is, you can think of it as either specific humidity or mixing ratio. They're gonna behave in the same way for these purposes. And the x-axis here is temperature. So we're getting warmer as we go to the right. Now my saturation curve is gonna look something like this. Saturation is where relative humidity is 100%. The point at which my air parcel cannot possibly hold any more water vapor. If you make it hold any more, it is going to immediately condense out as a liquid. So if I am on this curve, I am at saturation exactly. If I am below the curve over here, then I am below saturation. If I'm above the curve, then I am super saturated. Uh, this is not a stable place to be. The system's gonna try to get rid of some of that water vapor and get back to saturation. As I said earlier, when I was writing the script for this video, it was 91 degrees outside and 45% humidity. So let's say that that point is here on the graph. So this will be 91 degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity of 45%. No, let's imagine that we can cool our air parcel, but keep the total amount of water vapor in the air parcel constant. So if we boop, 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 move that way. If we come here, I actually did some of this math at about 70 degrees, still Fahrenheit. Our relative humidity goes up to about 80%. So without changing how much water vapor we have, my relative humidity has changed pretty dramatically. But notice that that's because I'm now closer to saturation for this temperature than I was over here. I'm very far away from saturation. And if we cool this even further, we'll hit saturation at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So without changing how much water vapor content we have, right, we have changed my relative humidity. So oftentimes relative humidity is the thing that we're more interested in, especially for say what you and I experience day to day. Because with the same amount of water vapor, I can be, there's gonna be absolutely no rain today to definitely look outside for clouds and maybe some precipitation. I dropped my chalk, hold on. <sighs> Came back. Now what happens if we cool this air parcel even further? If we cool this guy even further, well now we are super saturated and so we're gonna start making water vapor and we're going to get ourselves back to saturation as quickly as possible. So in short, if you're gonna like do science with atmospheric variables, you're probably gonna look at mixing ratio when you're interested in water content. 
if you are interested in, hey, is it gonna rain today or is it gonna be cloudy? Relative humidity is going to be your friend. Different variables looking at different things. Okay team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you liked this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye team.